Hi, today I'm going to talk about scoring. I think that scoring is probably not discussed enough in wine media, although we give out scores all of the time. So I wanted to break down what the 100 point scale is. You can't imagine the amount of people that have said to me, it's you only use 20 points of the whole 100 point scale. I understand that, but I'll tell you how the points are actually broken down. We'll talk a little bit about the 20 point scale and how that evolved into the 100 point scale. We're then going to talk about show judging and what that scale looks like. And then we're going to talk about me and how I judge so that you can take all of these things into account and make your own decision. So firstly, I work for Robert Parker Wine Advocate and Robert Parker is an American wine writer who started the Wine Advocate in 1978 and he's one of the world's leading wine writers. Now, he's no longer writing about wine, uh, but he himself established the 100 point scale that we now use internationally. So it's a pretty big deal. And I wanted to tell you what the wine advocate views the 100 point scale to mean. So 96 to 100 points, extraordinary. 90 to 95, outstanding. 80 to 89, barely above average to very good. 70 to 79, average. 60 to 69, below average. 50 to 59, unacceptable. Now, as drinkers and collectors, forget writers and and reviewers and all of that, just as a drinker and a buyer, and I do both, I don't ever see a wine reviewed for 50 or 59 points or 60 or 69 points and even 70 or 79 points. You barely see 80 to 85 in a bottle shop. So what's that about? Well, firstly, not all wines are tasted. I reckon there's about 20,000 wines in Australia each year, maybe more, and only around 10 to 12,000 of those wines, maybe 15,000, get reviewed each year. So there's a lot of wines that don't get reviewed. That's the first thing. Secondly, the public opinion around scores has pushed, and whether it's chicken and egg or egg and chicken, I don't know, but... It's kind of unacceptable for a wine to get under 85 points, even though, as you can see, we're looking at barely above average to very good. So 85 sort of is in the average zone. And I think that that's really acceptable because we can't all afford to drink great wines every single night of the week. So what's that about? And thirdly, there's more to the 100 point scale than you think. So let me break it down for you. So you get 50 points for turning up. 50 points. This wine's got 50 points for being made and bottled and sent to me. And that's exactly the same as you turning up to an exam and putting your name on the paper. So that's the first thing, 50 points for turning up. Five points for color. So we can see here, if I'm looking at four Rieslings in front of me, all from the 2022 vintage, that there are four, and you may not be able to see this, but there's four different colors on the table. So what I would be giving out Now, bearing in mind that the most golden, which would get the lowest points because Riesling should be very light in colour on release, the most golden could have gone through oak. So therefore that would give it some colour and you should not be taking any points off for that. But purely based on colour, we're looking at five points, five points, four points, three points. Okay. Now, then I then read the tech notes and understand that this has got oak in it. So I say, okay, well then therefore we would expect a bit of colour. We're going to put that back up to four or five. The second, 15 points for aroma. How do they smell? Is it fresh? Is it varietal? And by varietal, we mean it's Riesling, so therefore it should smell a certain way. Does it smell that way? Or does it smell like Pinot Gris or Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay? Because if a wine doesn't smell varietal, that's not a great start. You want the wine to smell like exactly what it is. So we've got 15 points for aroma, fresh, varietal, Um, can you smell how it was made? That might sound technical, but is there oak in there? Can you smell leaves? Um, you know, you can smell picking times. Is it, is it late? Are there all yellow characters in there? Uh, Australian Riesling doesn't generally have yellow fruit characters. That's usually a German or Austrian thing. So has it been picked late? You know, you can smell all of these things on the aroma. Then you get 20 points for flavor. So how all of those things knit together, the color of this wine, the aroma of this one, they all come together in the mouth and that's where you get 20 whole points from. So you might lose points for being not very fresh. The acid's a little bit hard. The sugar's a little bit obvious. Maybe there's not enough sugar. Maybe there's not enough acid. Maybe there's too much oak, not enough oak. All of these things all contribute to the 
flavor point that you give. And then there's this overlaying overall quality. 10 points go to overall quality. And that's where you really rely on the experience of the taster because you need to know as the drinker, as, as me, as the drinker, I rely on my friends and colleagues to give me a good, clear, contextual point. So I know that when I read Stefan Reinhardt from The Advocate about Riesling in Germany, I know that I can trust his scores because I've tasted his wines and I agree with his scores. I look at his wine a 92, a 97, a 99, a 90, and I think, yeah, I agree with that. So therefore, I like his palate, so therefore I trust him. But it doesn't mean that it's, he's got a great palate. It just means that he aligns with me. And that's, that's a very important part about wine writing. We have to find who we like and who we identify with and stick with those people and always, always, always measure against them. There are plenty of wine writers in Australia who I count as friends. And I know that we have very different proclivities and different palates. We like different things. I know that if so-and-so gives 95 points, I know exactly what that wine's going to be like. Now, some of them I like, and I'm like, well, if if they gave it 95 points, I'm definitely going to get it. You know, if this person gave it 95 points, they're very consistent. They're a very good judge. They've got a very good palate, but I don't agree with it. We don't like the same things. Therefore, I probably won't. But I have friends that like that kind of wine. So when they give it 95 points, I'm definitely going to say, you should try this. You'll love it. And that's that's the intricacy and and the complexity of wine writing and scoring Scoring actually doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we measure them in in points or bananas or stars or smiley faces or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is the ranking. The ranking is important because that's what a score is. It's not saying, you know, that some sometimes I taste a wine and I think it's not made perfectly. It's not. It's not made perfectly, um, but it's delicious. And I want to drink it. It's intriguing. It's exciting. I want it, right? So I might give that wine 89 points because it hasn't been made. You can tell, you can see the flaws in the construction of it, but it's delicious. So in my tasting note, I'm going to write exactly that. I'm going to write, this wine has got a few characters that are a little bit kind of um, outside of the bounds of, of what I would say is really high quality. But none of that detracts from the charm. It's delicious. I want to drink this wine. Um, Don't hesitate. There'll be lots of things in my notes that explain things like that, that say, you know, the converse, it's it's made incredibly well. It's made to a style. It's not my style, but for those who love it, go for it. And in that, I'm paying respect to the drinker that has different preferences to me because we all have different preferences. So some people like, many people actually like, high alcohol, rich, robust, full-bodied reds. I personally find them a little challenging to drink because I want to drink them and sit down and enjoy them, right? I love Shiraz, but I don't like it when it gets over about 14.5 because for me, it's too much alcohol. It's too much development. It's too much kind of time on the vine, but so many people love that. And so that doesn't make me right or them wrong. It just means that we have a difference in taste. So in that instance, I have to then nail down precisely what I think and say, this wine has been made very well. It's executed the style perfectly. I'll explain it, never complain about it, just explain it. So describe the flavors that I can taste and then give it the score that the quality of it deserves. So I might give that wine 95 points, even though I don't want to drink it. And this wine 89 points, even though I do. Now that may seem confusing, but what I am ranking is the quality So it's very important that you read the score and you say, ah, okay, 93 points, Sauvignon Blanc, that's pretty high. I mean, Sauvignon Blancs are never really going to go over 95 or 96 points, and that's at a stretch just because of the grape. All grapes are not created equal. Some are just better than others. It's never going to go over 95, 96 points. So 93, 94 points for a Sauvignon Blanc is pretty bloody good. I'll give it a go. And you get that ranking. You understand it's toward the top. If you're looking at a Shiraz, a premium Shiraz, and it's 93 points, well, you know Shiraz goes up to 100 points because Shiraz can be exceptional. Shiraz, Syrah, depends where you are. So you know if you're paying $500 for a 93-point Shiraz, you want to find out why. You want to read the note, read other people's notes, find out why they gave it 93 points instead of 97 or 98. So all of these things are really important to keep in mind, and I know that it sounds like a complex algorithm of 
pluses and minuses and this grape and that grape and all of that, and it is. But at the end of the day, a good wine writer should be giving you a numerical score that relates to the quality of the wine or the condition of the wine, because it might be a great wine that's not in condition, i.e. cork, brett, oxidation, you name it. And then you go from there. And I think that most importantly, and certainly for me as a drinker, I think this all the time, forget my job, me as a purely as a drinker and a buyer, I look at who gives the scores and I make my decision based on that. I'm not going to tell you who I follow and who I don't follow because I don't think that those names need to be brought out. But you have to know that I follow people and I don't follow people. And that's not because they're good or bad people. It's because our palates are align and I like what they like or don't like. So it is a really complex um, it is a really complex thing, wine judging at, and scoring, but you just have to know that the numbers are there to delineate the quality and then you must read the note to understand what the wine tastes like and work out whether or not it suits you. And just because we say it's a really great wine doesn't mean you're going to like it. It just is a good indication of the quality and the experience. You make your own mind up. The final thing I wanted to talk about was show judging because show judging is slightly different. So you basically only go from 79 to 100 in a show. You almost never give 100 and you rarely give a 79 unless the wine is really out of condition. Um, and 84, as same as same as these, 84 and below is no medal. 85 and, and to 89 is a bronze. 90 to 94 is a silver and 95 and above is a gold. Now, it's interesting because I judge a lot of shows, eight this year, eight last year. I'll, I'll do a number next year, probably not eight. But I've been doing it for 10 years now and and so I've looked at thousands and thousands and thousands of wines and given them all a number, <laughs> given all of these wines a number and I've never gone over 96 points in a show or 79 points in a show, which the, so the scale extends beyond that when I'm writing about wines in print but – in a show, you don't need to go higher than 95 points because 95 points indicates a gold medal and that's what we're looking for. 96 points is pretty serious. If a wine gets 96 or 97 points at a show, it's pretty serious. It can indicate that it's been um, elevated up past judging onto a callback onto a trophy table. Um, gold medals are not so difficult to get at a wine show, although they do, every single one does get hashed out. What's difficult to get at a wine show is a trophy because that has to go through a number of different gates in order to get onto the trophy table on the final day. So you can um, be swayed by gold medal um, stickers, if you like, in a bottle shop. Um, I certainly take them into account, but I'm, they're not the be-all and end-all for me because a gold medal Sauvignon Blanc, as discussed, is not going to be the same as a gold medal Chardonnay. They're just not created equally. Um, but certainly a trophy is something special because a trophy says that that wine came out on top above all of the others on the week of judging and that's pretty special if you've got if you've got you know 200 chardonnays and you you pull up one i mean it's a pretty big deal so it may not be um your number one but it was certainly the judge's number one for a number of different reasons so it's 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 an important distinction so look scoring is very complicated but it's very simple as well 85 to 89 points means drink it drink it on a weekday don't think too hard about it you might find a wine that's really, really delicious and not perfect, not made perfectly, but is really charming and, and, and awesome. And I have plenty of those that I like to buy. Um, but 80 to 85, 80 to 8, 85 to 89 should just be, yes, great, good, I'll drink that. That's fantastic. That's been vetted. It's not faulty. It's not gross. It's just tasty and yum. If it's not complex, it's not going to hit 90 for me. If it's showing complexity, I'm going to push it to 90. It can be all of these amazing things and it still sits in 80s. If it's complex, i.e. lots of different kinds of characters and flavours, it goes into the 90s realm. So 90 to 94 is awesome. If I'm giving out 90 to 94, I bloody love the wine. I love it. Like 90 to 94 is a really sweet spot for me because these are often wines that are value wines that are delicious. You'll catch me buying them and drinking them and I love them. 94 is this funny little edging space for me into 95. 95 and above 
wow. I mean, these wines are going to be exceptional, exciting, delicious, wonderful examples. They might be slightly offbeat because I like slightly offbeat. I will call it out in the tasting note, but these are going to be exceptional wines of quality, style, and longevity. 94 is edging right in there. And this is the space that I'm going to give the wines that are really weird and out there and awesome that I am absolutely and totally 100% enamored by. So 94 points is a very special point for me. So don't look at it and think, oh, it's not 95. Why is that? It's 94 for a reason, but not for a detraction. It's 94 and it's exciting. 95 and above, as I say. Uh, but we start getting into real rarefied air when you move into 97, 98, 99. I've never given 100 in print. We'll see how that goes in 2023 and beyond. The thing that I uh, that holds me back from giving 100 points is that um, whenever I give a Chardonnay 99 points, like the Giaconda 2018 Chardonnay, which I just gave 99 points in the Wine Advocate just this month, that 99 points for me sits comfortably in, in Burgundy, for example, which is where some of the greatest Chardonnays on the planet come from, in my opinion. And I have to be comfortable that my 99 points is going to sit next to William Kelly's 99 points in terms of quality, he's reviewing Burgundy, I'm reviewing Australia. So it's no small, no small thing to give 99 points. And actually, the question might be, well, why don't you just give 100? Well, my 100s have to match, you know, my 100-point Shiraz has to match a Rhone Shiraz. And that's totally fine and cool, but I just need to make sure that, 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 it's, that it's right. And I'm just holding, holding fire for now. That might change but it doesn't have to. I'm trying to give a totally honest contextual view of wine, world wine. Uh, and so when you see 98s and 99s, you can be sure that I believe that this is one of the greatest examples of the variety going around. Forget Australia, forget, forget a state in Australia, forget you know the new world, whatever. It's just on the table of world wine, a 99 point wine. And it means a lot. So 95 also by that same measure means a lot. 90 by that measure means a lot. I don't know if any of you follow Alan Meadows on Berghound, um, but he was one of the, the early um, wine writers that I would follow. And honestly, I mean, he gives wines 87 and 88 points and you'd, you'd, you'd do a lot to get those wines. I mean, he really makes a point of using the full spread of scores. So now that you know what the full spread of score means, uh, now that you know why I give the scores that I do and how you can try to kind of make sense of this whole world, I'd love to hear what you think about scoring and if this has helped you at all. It's a hugely complex kaleidoscope of, of things to take into account, but um, I think a really important one to lay out clearly. So go forth, make your own decisions, follow the people that you agree with in, in flavour he says, I like it. I say I like it. Same. You follow. You might only like them for Shiraz. You might not like the Rieslings they like, but yeah, like, you know, there's a couple of writers in Australia where I know if they recommend Cabernet, I'm there. They have a very good handle on Tannin. I like what they like. I'm going to buy it. That's it's fact. It's how it goes. <laughs>